Let me paint a picture for you. You're in the library for finals week, struggling to complete that last essay for the semester before you head home for the summer. But you can't focus. You decide to turn on some instrumental music and you slowly begin to feel yourself relax. Now you can focus and you can get to work. Have you been in a situation similar to this where music has helped you in some way? If so, have you ever wondered why that is? Why music has an amazing ability to calm you down, pump you up, inspire you, motivate you, cheer you up? Well, that's what I wanted to figure out. For my 2010 project, I decided in an effort to understand more about the relationship between music and our brains to create a podcast series titled, fittingly, Music in Our Brain. <laughs> when I was thinking of this idea, I was interested in doing something related to music because music has always played a prominent role in my life, aside from school, of course. And I'd always known that music has had some influence on us emotionally and physiologically, but never really knew the specifics of that. So with that in mind, I found my topic. I decided to create a podcast because I knew I'd always learned information better when I taught it to someone else. But also, I wanted to help individuals who don't have an extensive music background understand what exactly music does to a person. On top of learning about the topic for personal improvement, I also wanted to enter the discussion regarding music's influence on individuals with mental illnesses, specifically um, depression and anxiety. As part of the podcast series, I wanted to talk about various ways we can use music as a tool, rather than just a pleasurable activity. Um, when you know exactly how music affects you, it becomes easier to pick the right music to ease your pre-presentation jitters, energize you before heading to work, um, or even help you fall asleep. While I think music can and should be used for pleasure and as a fun activity, I also believe it can be added to the toolbox of techniques available in order to enhance your well-being and to encourage a positive mindset. So when I first started this 10 weeks ago, I never thought about promoting my podcast or how difficult it would be to manage my time so that this project received a higher priority than my other projects. Um, as a result, I didn't get to achieve as much as I would have liked with this project. Um, that doesn't mean I haven't learned so much from the process, though, and I definitely see myself continuing to create podcasts and encourage discussions on this topic even after today. My original goal was just to have five podcasts created and a survey made where participants could discuss their personal experiences with music. Um, I didn't quite get to that point. I still need to create a couple more podcasts, and I plan to continue making podcasts even after um, I turn in this video and turn in this assignment. With the survey, though, um, I was much more interested in learning about the individual's experience with music and how um, and their thoughts on the relationship between music and the brain, even if they didn't have um, musical background, rather than creating a realistic scientific study where I analyze the data and stuff like that, and then um, report it and turn it, like create a hypothesis and everything. That's not what I was interested in doing. Um, but looking at all the results from the survey. Um, definitely helped me realize that another goal for this project was to create a place for people to discuss their experiences while learning more, especially if they don't have that background with music because I still want people who, who don't think they know enough about music to be able to come in and say, well, you know, this one time I was listening to music and, and then they talk about their experience and I want them to be able to feel comfortable about doing that. So um, I decided to create a website, which will be linked below. Um, and I decided to post everything related to my Twin Time project and music in the brain onto there. And I'm hoping after this to keep using it, keep creating more podcasts, and keep encouraging discussion on this topic. Because it really is amazing how music has such an important place in our world and how the effects of music are incredibly universal. Um, everyone, regardless of culture or location, can feel something when listening to music, even if the music is from a different culture, or if it's in a different language, or if you don't even recognize um, the like the typical musical uh, rules that are associated, because the music theory does vary by culture. Um, so the ability to be moved by music is what really connects us as a species, and that's why I think that this topic deserves much more of a spotlight. And that's why I decided to use it as my te um, my te uh, my twenty time project. Sorry. <laughs> So now that I've done this 2010 project and I have done all the research for it, I can definitely use my research for a personal improvement too. Like now I, I can sit down and study with the proper music. I don't have to turn on um, Kendrick Lamar when I can turn on some classical music that has uh, sl that's more slow and relaxes you because um, 
if you have something as incredible as music, you might as well learn how to use it to improve your lifestyle, not kind of like hinder you. So it's always good to have um, a time of the day where you sit down and listen to your favorite song because that's going to be important for your well-being. But also, if you're going to listen to music and if you constantly feel the need to have music um, playing where whatever you're doing or wherever you are, like I do, then you might as well use music that is cohesive with the environment and with the tasks that you're doing. Hopefully, with my podcast and my 20 Time Project, uh, listeners can begin to realize that and begin to implement that kind of thinking in order to just do well at everything that they're doing to improve themselves, improve their life. So...